Hello, hello. How are you? I'm well, and yourself? How are you today? I'm doing well. Good. What are we talking about today? So, I want to read to you the benefits of rest. It improves memory. It decreases injuries. It reduces inflammation. It helps you keep a healthy weight. It reduces stress. It reduces your chances of heart illness. It gives you more energy. It keeps your immune system strong. And yet, the average American gets only 11 days of vacation and 55% of people don't use their time off. For the average individual, taking a time off sometimes is viewed as not being available for their employer. And I think that the average individual does not want to come across as though they are not available for their employer. An example of this is when an individual fills out an application. I know I've done this before, and I know other individuals have done this. And I was even advised when I started looking for work and trying to just get any type of experience. They would always tell me, just put your availability open. Make yourself as available as possible. That's going to increase the possibility of getting a job. You know, once you get in there, then you could try to maybe make something happen. And so, you know, you put yourself available, open on an application, they call you, and now you're stuck in the bind because you're not really available 24-7, but you don't want to look bad or look as though you are committed to the position. And so I think the average American, the average individual who applies for a job maybe says they're open. And then when they're called upon, they don't actually take time off because again, they don't want to look like they're actually not committed. So you would think that resting, people see it related to, to not having commitment to, mm -hmm. to a lack of commitment. I think so. I think there is a idea of rest and we're going to use this example of gym, even though we're talking about rest, but this example of gym, if I go to the gym and I work for work out for three hours, and when I get out of the gym, I am sore. I'm so sore that I feel it for the next two to three days. That means that I'm not going to get back into the gym until probably day four. But if Correct. you've, right, if you've only worked out one day and rested three days, but in those four days, I went one hour a day. I've worked out more than you. So at the end of the month, I will have gained more muscle than you. I will have trained my body more than you. I will have built a healthier habit better than yours. It's interesting that you, you know, mentioned that, that way of seeing it, because when we talk about of, you know, that this last example that you gave, mm -hmm. if you go to the gym and you go early in the morning, you're going to be able to work more than, you know, the next person. But is that healthy for us to want to work more than the next pe person next to us? This is not in the sense of comparison by saying, I'm better than her. I'm just saying that if we're looking at productivity and, and you know, each individual can try it themselves, work out today and just kill yourself working out and then see what happens in the next three days versus just working out one hour. And I think the way this relates to rest is that we will rest minimal a couple hours during the week and take one day of the week and just sleep like, you know, like we're dead to the world. But it's like, yeah, but you also lost 18 hours on a Saturday when you still could have produced. And I'm saying are, it are we, based are upon we obsessed experience. obsessed with production? Is the American culture obsessed with production? That's a good question. I think production is, in a way, it's the name of the game, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> I ask because, you know, according to the little research that I was doing, yeah. in Europe, like, people have to. It's mandatory. It's the law. They mm -hmm. need to have at least 20 days mm -hmm. a year off in order for, for the society to function. And it makes me wonder, because here in America, we just have 11 days, and yet, yeah. you know, people don't, don't use them. 
So it's mm -hmm. 11 days and most people will see what? Two, three days? Not even? Yeah. Because 55% of people don't use their time off. So are we obsessed with production, with producing? And is our value attached to our production? I think so. Listen, for me personally, I have what I call the 10 commandments of personal growth. And okay. and for me, the within my 10 commandments of personal growth, my fourth one is to rest. Rest is important to me. Just like it is, just like it is in, in, in Exodus 20. Just, just <laughs> like in Exodus 20, exactly. Uh, so I think I think rest is is very important, but I also think that there is that battle of of trying to create a healthy balance between rest and productivity. And this does become a very interesting balance that we try to have. Now, I have, I've attempted to let go of the idea of balance. I don't think necessarily balance is the key. I think yeah. the key here is harmony. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's integration. We're in the same wavelength when we say, when we say, when I say harmony and you say integration, or at least I think we are, because what I'm saying when I say harmony is, for example, what I have learned at work or what I have learned in coaching or what I have learned in studying or pastoring, I have to bring that home. And one of the things that I struggled with early on in my life was that compartmentalization of when I'm at church, I'm the, I'm, I'm the guy at church. When I'm at home, I'm at home. I'm not a different person, but I am a different person because I'm at home. And when you're at home, you, you kind of put your guard down. You're not trying to come across as somebody who has it all figured out. And I did that for a long time. I had to get to this place where I was like, dang it, you know what? I don't got it figured out. Forget it. If you like it, you like it. If you don't like it, you don't like it. And when I, I got... We, no one has it figured out no, yet. I don't no. think anybody has But let's be honest, it. pastor, let's be honest. How many pastors, preachers, teachers will have you believe they got it figured out? Yes, okay. I, I, I agree with that. And I think that comes in with uh, like the peer pressure because people want to see you as the perfect person mm -hmm. because you're right. a pastor. And then there's like this unspoken, it's, you know, expectation. Mm -hmm. And it's weird because we all, I think, and just in my opinion, mm -hmm. we all try to achieve it at one point or another. We are mm -hmm. trying to achieve that perfection that people see in us at one point or another. And then we all figure out like, this is completely unsustainable. Yeah, exactly. It's unsustainable. That's why I don't like the idea that's often presented that we have to be at a specific spiritual level. And people will say, well, if, if you want to see something, you have to be at a certain level spiritually. You have to be at a certain le and And that vocabulary, that language, that description of, well, you know, you just got to go a little higher. It's like, no, I don't I don't see that scripturally. I, I do see that there has to be a certain commitment, but that's not a level. It's just a yeah. commitment. It, and, and so I think that the same spirit of the, of the Lord that's in you is in me. And so the same spirit of the Lord that, that wants to use me speaking, he can use you speaking. It's just whoever he chooses to use on that day. It, it has nothing to do with level with, you know, with, with, with any, all these other things that we put in our minds. And so I think that when we get back to this point of rest, I've spoken to enough individuals who they have in their relationship with their local church, they would tell their pastor, pastor, I'm going to take a day off or I'm going to take a sabbatical or I'm going to sit down and leaders within the congregation would make them feel bad. Oh, yes. And because that's not something that, that you do. You cannot rest from working for God. <laughs> exactly. Because of course, Jesus said, while the day lasts, you must work. And, yes. so, <laughs> and it's like, no, wait a minute. We're taking this, we're taking this so wrong because there has to be a day where we rest. And I, I think it is vital and it is necessary. And so what happens is that there is there's a level of burnout that takes place, yes. but then at the same time, you become jaded, and and this is this is what this was one of my fears when I was in leadership, prior to becoming a pastor and and actually experiencing it, where I did become jaded, where I thought, 
It doesn't matter what I do. It's not going to be good enough. It doesn't matter how much I work. It doesn't matter how much I commit to the local church. It's just not going to be good enough. And and, and I was literally, I, I want to say literally killing myself because I was working consistently to the point where my wife was like, yo, you're doing too much. Because I was literally going to work, coming out of work, literally going to church. I wouldn't see my wife and my children until late night when it was time to get home. And sometimes by the time I got home, they were already sleeping. And that was me before pastoral ship. Before I was a pastor. I was an associate was before? pastor. Before? Before pastoral ship. Thank was, God for mercy. <laughs> I was an associate pastor. I was, man, listen, I was an associate pastor. I was a youth pastor. I was doing discipleship. I was, I was teaching. I was doing the streaming, the social media. I was taking on a lot. Yeah. The, the roles in church. That's another topic that we need to explore later For on. Sure. Definitely need to do that. How it relates to rest is like, if you have in your mind that I need to keep going, 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 going. And I can't ask for a day off because, you know, if God comes and you're resting, you're going to hell. Like, and, <laughs> you know, it's like it becomes you know a where thing I, where you, you're burnt out and jaded. Yes. You know where this, you know, topic comes from and, and, and kind of inspired me. Mm -hmm. um, it, I, I was on social media and I saw this meme of a priest that said, I don't take a day off because the enemy doesn't take a day off. Oh my goodness. And this um, old lady mm -hmm. replied to him, I think you need a better role model. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. I love that. You know, Ivelisse, we get to a place where it's like, well, the enemy, this, the enemy, that, the enemy, this, the enemy, that is like, shift your focus, bro. Like, yeah, God created everything. Mm -hmm. And it says that on the seventh day, he rested. Mm -hmm. So if God rested after everything was done, why aren't we resting? Mm. I think that it's very interesting, the relationship that the church has with rest, mm -hmm. because we are supposed to be different from the world, right? We are supposed to um, preach something different. We're supposed to be an example. And yet we are having the same mentality when it comes to rest mm -hmm. that the world has. You need to produce, you need to do, you cannot take a break. That's what the world tells me to do all the time. Your value is connected to your production. And I think that has infiltrated in the church nowadays. And like you were mentioning, you know, if you talk to if you talk to leadership in church and you say, I need to take a day off, even people that are been sick and um, they stay home for a day because they're sick um, and they stay home for a second day because they're sick. People start questioning. Are they're they really sick? They're ridiculed. They, yeah. Are, are they really mm -hmm. sick? Or are they really sick? Or are they really sick? Or are they really sick? Right. Spiritually, they, they're empty. They're done yeah, spiritually. Yeah, they're empty. It's, it's they're a not committed. Day that they're not in church. Mm -hmm. So there's there must be something that's completely wrong and they're going to hell. So if we are having the same approach when it comes to rest as the world has, are we mm -hmm. really being set apart? Are we really being an example for the for the world when it comes to 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 rest? When it comes to rest, I don't think the church is being an example. And when and when I say church, I want to be very specific of what I'm talking about. When we talk about church, the word church is broken down in three parts. So I am the church because the spirit of the Lord dwells in me. Mm -hmm. I go to church, meaning I attend a local place, an assembly of people, which is a church, and I am part of the church, meaning the universal church, which is the body of Christ, which is all of the believers of all time, of all places, nationalities, etc. And when I speak of the church in this context, I'm referring to the local church, because I'm of the position that the universal church, the bride of Christ, she ain't got nothing wrong with her. But the local church does have some issues to work out. And some local churches are really not shining that light on what it looks like to be someone who 
physically rests and spiritually rests. And I think it, I think that we definitely need to do better because the, the, the scriptures are filled with um, verses about rest. And I mean, literally from Genesis to Revelation. Hey, this conversation is not over yet. Follow us at Growth Strategy Spotlight. Simply utilize the link in the show notes that's going to allow you to go to Growth Strategy Spotlight. Make sure to subscribe there. If you utilize the link in the show notes, you'll be able to start a free trial and get the remainder of this conversation. It's only heating up here today as we are talking about to rest or not to rest in the Coaching Faith Podcast.